This is the story of our once in a lifetime trip to Antarctica, where we spent 11 days living on a boat, met some penguins, went for a swim, took some pictures, and had one of the most amazing times of our lives. It's, it's kind of like going outer space. You need specialized equipment to get here. Like you can't come here in just any old ship. When you get here, it's a really foreign landscape. And there's nobody permanently living here. I mean, there's bases. It's like what you would imagine if you were going to another planet. They say that it takes longer to get to Antarctica than the moon. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but today we'll be flying from Toronto to Chile to Buenos Aires to Patagonia and then two days on a boat across the Drake Passage to finally land in Antarctica. But first the four of us and all of our luggage need to fit into this Toyota Yaris. I've been fortunate enough to borrow my dream camera for the trip, a Leica M10. It's the smallest, heaviest, most expensive camera on the market right now. And even if I could afford to buy one, I'd be afraid to take it anywhere. This lens and camera combination is just north of $10,000. Yes, so we have arrived at the end of the planet. <laughs> Uh, which is basically Ushuaia, yes. and uh, we're getting ready to go and explore Tierra del Fuego National Park. Oh my god. This is the latest 911 Turbo. Sequential, 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. 3 to 16, what Porsche say 2.5, 6 seconds, but in reality probably does 2.2. Tire Slayer. things we need most, five-speed manual and a hand-operated e-brake. What's the fastest car in the world? A rental car. <laughs> a rental car. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. Yeah, we have a check engine light. <laughs> a little dusty. That's all we can really do for now. And then Michael took us to a peat moss field that he'd found earlier that day. Do you know the term peaty when you talk about scotch? 
with Petey. And this right here has been all mine. Someone has come up and dug out a bunch of peat moss from this area specifically. <laughs> and if you look yonder, you can actually see an unmined peat moss field. We should go look at that. Someone has trenched out the peat moss. So you take a, a weird trowel and you kind of slice it out. Feel it under your feet. This is thick. Talk a little bit about the peat moss field? No. <laughs> I literally, I literally have no comments on the peat moss field. <laughs> I'm Mike McCauley, currently unemployed traveler, but prior to that was uh, entrepreneur, engineer, Google employee, and soon to be in the future, tech worker slash investor slash mentor, or whatever else comes down the line. I, I always introduce Mike McCauley as something different just to like throw everyone off the scent, you know? Like, who is, who is he, really? I heard he was a movie actor, I heard he was an investor, everybody, nobody knows really who Mike McCauley is. My name is Donna Litt, formerly known as Donna Fung. I, yeah. <laughs> I went to school there for archeology span um, so that I could, because it was an excuse to travel the world and play in the dirt and learn about history and, and cultures and everything like that. Um, but then I moved to Kitchener-Waterloo after graduating and started in tech. So I am an ex-archaeologist, ex-techie, now writer of fiction, unpublished writer of fiction, so amateur writer, soon to be published. <laughs> How about you sit like a, like a gentleman? We can do the interview now. My name is Michael Litt. I'm a co-founder of a tech company. I am the CEO of that company. I invest in technology companies with Mike McCauley. I am uh, the husband of my wonderful wife, Donna Fung, who you heard from earlier. I'm also a father to Peppy, who is a hairy hairless dog. And I live in downtown Kitchener. And I'm Taylor Jackson. I used to take pictures of bands, now I take pictures at weddings. Last year we drove some classic air-cooled Porsches across the country. San Francisco all the way back to our hometown of Kitchener-Waterloo, which is about an hour outside of Toronto in Canada. We called the adventure Endangered Experiences, and the idea was to do things that 20 or 30 years from now would not be possible for anyone to do, or that the experience would change significantly. Which is why we're now headed to Antarctica. No fancy production crew, just a digital SLR and a few lenses. Made it to the bottom of the world and I'm shooting my first photos with this Leica. And I think they look pretty good. We checked into our hotel and noticed that the only other hotel guest was this dog. The entire property was vacant. This, the views are just incredible. Like, look at that. Yes. It's completely empty. There's nobody here. It's beautiful. It feels like the house from The Shining. I thought that it would be funny to be the first person, uh, probably in the world, to bring Reebok pumps to Antarctica. Uh, but they're the only shoes I brought, so I'm forced to wear them the entire trip. They're still 100% functional. They're a little uh, stained from jeans, but I never had them when I was a kid, so I bought them now. They look like they're gonna be really great on the, uh, on the ice. Then we went swimming. Michael dove under and immediately hit his head on the bottom. Mike McCauley did some push-ups, and Michael hit his head on the bottom once again. I've read some horror stories about flying drones near the polar regions, but I figured it wasn't really that big of a deal. Heading back in, my controller read magnetic interference, I lost control, and it flew directly into this concrete wall.
The car only has 30,000 kilometers on it. Seen, seen better days. I think it's been a... Donna found one of the most terrifying images I've ever personally seen. I think it's a magician on skis. Look at the face. I first wanted to go to Antarctica because, you know, when you're young and you have a globe or a map in your house and you look at all the different places you could possibly go in the world and none of them make any sense and they're all really far apart, Antarctica was one of those places that seemed impossible. I think when we first walked onto the ship, that was when it really dawned on me that this boat I was walking on was going to take me to a land that few of us have ever had the chance to explore. I had this sense of adventure and, and anticipation and I couldn't wait for it all to begin. It's just like being in a, in a hotel that is humming slightly. It's going to be terrible. And it's like the 8,000 horsepower diesel motor that's just humming, ready to take us across the passage, which is pretty exciting. Is that food? <laughs> that Zodiac is definitely going flat. I should, I should probably tell the captain. They let Matt Damon on the boat. We should go and tell the captain. I'm going to close your laptop. No, 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 don't do it. I'm going to refer to you as Matt from now on. Okay. Matt Damon. Are you going for the polar plunge, Matt Damon? Absolutely. Yeah, swim to Antarctica. Um, so during the safety briefing, we were informed that there's a pandemic flu spreading across the west coast of the U.S. And uh, I'm worried that we're on a bit of a, a bit of a, a mission here. So she was just giving me the evil eye. I was talking about pandemic flu. I was the doctor. <laughs> I felt really bad about that. Give me a minute. All right, anyways, so during the safety briefing, we were informed that there's a pandemic flu on this boat. I'm afraid we're on a zombie cruise. And I think there's going to be a ghost ship arriving in Antarctica. So I'm going to go put on my submersion suit and cellophane wrap my face and stay in my bed for the next 11 days. And around 10 minutes, we'll be setting sail. So we recommend you come out on deck if you want to witness the beginning of our voyage from Ushuaia sailing south. Next destination. Antarctica. There's something amazing about being cut off from the internet. I have a week with this camera to get better at taking photos and taking videos. No distractions. Heading out of port, we were all nervous about crossing the Drake Passage. It's where the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans collide, and the waves could be tall enough to break over the bow of the ship. The worst part will be if we get the corkscrew motion while the ship pitches and rolls at the same time. It's enough to make even the most experienced sailors sick.
first night they were handing out seasickness pills, and we were told that while they would stop us from getting sick, they would also make us incredibly drowsy. We decided to take our chances and stay off of them for now. Oh, the ship is moving up here. Can you feel that? Yeah. We're on the drink. Ghost ship. Holy f I got shivers down my spine. Good thing I got the Lumi. Oh, jeez. Thank you. Thank you, Kim Kardashian. Careful, careful. Watch out. Stop. Watch your step. We should. I just put wine all over my hand. We should tell the captain. You can still see land. But Are we going to turn into Drake? I think the rapper from Canada. I'm pretty sure that's what happens when you go across the Drake's passage. Oh, there's, a new, here, there's an influenza epidemic on the ship. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the name of that song? I don't know. You should call me. You should call me on my ro rotary phone. <laughs> Is this a, a parody that we're allowed to use? You could call me on my rotary phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the ship is haunted. First of all, there was a an invisible man reading on an iPad in the observation deck. We found a really suspicious and spooky-looking face on the rigging of the ship. We should tell the captain. We are here. We need to go to here. We have a long way to go. The number of people I talked to who had been there or had done research on the trip before and informed us that uh, the Drake Passage was going to be a very long and uh, very wavy and very stormy uh, trip by boat. And uh, I had no idea if I was going to be uh, boat sick. What is that? Seasick? I believe that's called. Seasick or not? and uh, didn't know what the climate in Antarctica was going to be. But uh, again, we're coming from Canada, and uh, I love downhill skiing, so uh, we were fairly prepared for the weather. I feel like a celebrity, cruising with Drake through his passage. Rumor has it that Drake became Drake by crossing the Drake Passage. Uh, when he began his adventure, he was Aubrey on Degrassi, and after two days at sea, he landed in Antarctica as Drake. I did not take the seasick medication. I don't know if I would classify myself as feeling great, but I do feel good. You feel awake? I feel somewhat awake, yes. I feel like I can sleep forever. Michael took the seasickness medication. I'm tired. Donna also took the seasickness medication. So I haven't admitted it until this moment because everyone who asked me, I was like, oh, it was fine. It wasn't nearly as bad as I expected, but then seeing my face. <laughs> felt like a jello mold. I just couldn't physically do anything. I gotta be honest, uh, I normally never get seasick. Um, I should probably touch wood. But um, I would say that that was by far the most sea uh, movement I have ever experienced. And it's like it's like getting pretty pretty wavy, as you can tell by the steady cam. All, and all the battens are hatched on the third floor uh, because we're expecting very rough seas. We've been pushed along from the rear by north winds and north seas for the past day and a half, and uh, we're about two thirds of the way through the Drake Passage. Uh, however, we're expecting those winds to shift westerly and actually start battering the ship with some extreme lofty rolling from side to side. And uh, that should make for an interesting night. So stay tuned.
staff gave the waves on our Drake Crossing about a 4 out of 10. I'm not sure if a 10 out of 10 exists, but I would not like to be on that boat. By morning we were seeing penguins in the water and approaching Deception Island, which is by far the most dark and ominous name of any island that I have ever met. Whalers Bay right now and we might not be able to do an excursion because it's too windy, too foggy, and too stormy subsequently. It would have been awesome to get in Zodiacs and, and go off to, to the shore, but I think that was the first moment that we all really realized that this truly is an expedition and we are at the mercy of, of, of nature. So I'm using this 45 millimeter tilt shift. Uh, it was the last lens that I decided to bring. I wasn't going to bring it and then I decided last minute that I might regret it. And I think day one in Antarctica, I'm glad I brought it. I think this and the long zoom are the two that I'm going to use the most. We then saw our first iceberg and there were penguins on it. Sitting down for dinner, I kept getting up and going outside to photograph the icebergs. The light was amazing, and it is absolutely crazy how black the water is here. We're gonna go on our first expedition tomorrow. And we've been stuck on this boat for like, I don't know, two and a half days. And I'm going a little crazy. But I hear that the crab eaters, the humpback whales, and the penguins all eat the same thing, which is krill. And so we're thinking of getting some bait so that we can attract some of these magnificent species to us on this boat. So. I can't see anything. It must be broken. What's... Is something wrong with these? <laughs> What's that? There's... <laughs> Whoa. Penguin. A, a wild penguin. Mondo? Squishy Mondo? It's a water regular. Oh, it's... I bet you Mike McCauley would really love one of these. I think you should get it for him. Is that tofu in there? He loves tofu. <laughs> This might attract a whale, or probably a leopard seal, because of the penguins. Do you have any krill that we could buy in a, like, bait? I like have a, one like a, krill left. Oh, sorry. Whoops. <laughs> sorry about that. Here. Thank you. Um, where's yeah. my Mr. Krill? Oh. You have Mr. Krill? Oh, no. What? Oh, he fell in here. Here, this is my last Mr. Krill. He's on sale. Is this a $7. real, is this a, a live krill? Him. Well, whatever you want to imagine, he could be. <laughs> All right. We finally finished crossing the Drake. Everybody's feeling a little bit better. We're in this beautiful, calm waters. We're about to go on our first excursion. And we've learned from uh, the marine biologist on board that most of the species in the water here eat something called krill. Uh, even the crab eaters who, contrary to popular belief and naming conventions, do not eat crab. They eat krill and their defecus looks like corned beef hash. We're examining the krill, making sure that it was going to be biological and ecologically friendly for the whales and the crab eaters. We ripped uh, the tag off of it and noticed that it was manufactured in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, which is the same place I was manufactured.
to Antarctica. This morning we woke up in a sea of icebergs and today we're taking our first zodiac. Everything is beautiful and definitely more vast than I had anticipated. I am getting my gear together here. I have these dry bags for all my camera equipment and this 80 to 400 has proved the most useful so far, especially from the boat. But I think it might be somewhat useless on land. We'll find out. Over and out. navigating through icebergs and we actually just saw one break apart over there. We had to turn and jettison away from it and then it started to chase us. It's almost like we shouldn't be here. And uh, we're searching for treasure in the Antarctic. Is treasure penguin feces? <laughs> yes it is. There's lots of it. Penguin lots of treasure. Whale tails. There's a very precarious large snowball on the edge of this iceberg and I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at it and hopefully it falls off. Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I personally have only ever seen a humpback whale once before from about a kilometer away and we just spent the last I'd say half an hour boating around this area where at least a dozen are feeding and they've been feeding for a very long time. I imagine whales eat like all the time because they're pretty big and it would take a lot of krill to fill a whale's belly. Did anybody get that? I would absolutely say that one of the things that I was most looking forward to in going to Antarctica was seeing the penguins. 
they have so much character and they're such an interesting species and I thought that it was most interesting to just witness their busyness like they were always on a mission always doing something and I just found it fascinating for them to just continue on with whatever that they were doing and essentially just kind of ignoring us. So what Taylor just captured was a rare instance of a male penguin trying to win the love of the most fair female penguin in the rookery by giving her rocks. But he didn't go very far to find all the good ones, and so she keeps rejecting them because he's giving her all the same pieces of the same rock. So much character. Teasing each other. Chasing each other around. So many of them. surprisingly warm and the guide just told us that it rarely rains and when we first got out here it was raining pretty hard so I guess warmer than it normally is. It feels like it's probably in like the three to five degree range which um, seems surprisingly warm and uh, talking to our, uh, our friend the geologist here uh, with the crew he says he's, he's never actually experienced it raining here. Um, a lot of these guys have been here hundreds of times so Definitely some unseasonally warm weather. Never expected penguins to smell this way. But they kind of just smell like shrimp poop. Telling Taylor how awesome it would be to rip a few big GS carves on this face. Maybe scoop up a few penguins. Big pow slash. whoop -pa, Smack the lip. Whoa, get pitted. So pitted. Penguins are a lot of fun. They're a lot like humans. They're just kind of running around playing with each other and pushing each other over and bringing each other rocks. The face up here that uh, Michael Litt wants to uh, shred on some skis is uh, my favorite for photography right now. Uh, all the penguins are going up and down the hill.
was that was really hard to describe other than the curl bait. It's still going it's down. Magical. It's still happening. <laughs> hey guys. Oh my gosh, look at them. Welcome to my spacious crib. Nice breakfast. We'd be hanging here. Yeah, I ate breakfast here this morning. It was very lonely, but it was efficient. Uh, we will be landing on the peninsula for the first time, which is the continental of Antarctica, and that's pretty exciting. Officially the first time right. I'll be on the seventh continent. Bill the krill. Going on excursion, day two. We were lucky with them yesterday. We're gonna see if we can uh, find ourselves some potatoes. What? Yeah. It's warmer than yesterday. Right? It's so warm. Yeah. Uh, any tips for photographers coming to Antarctica for the first time? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Take a good camera. Bring a good camera. <laughs> Actually, this one is too. Doesn't matter now. Like you know, it's all this technology. This small camera take better picture than even this one. I really jealous one when I used in my almost five thousand dollars camera. Shoot the polar bear, and I have to crop it, and I lose so much quality. And I guess have. $100 camera with the zoom and just zoom it, take a picture, quality was like five times better. Like really clear. Yeah. And just use it, you know, they put on uh, some construction, like really still, have to be on the zoom it. Perfect. Even doesn't matter how much it costs. Yeah. Technology. technology. Yeah, technology. So peaceful. It's really nice. It's like paradise here in Paradise Harbor. Finally reached the continent. Feels pretty cool. Took a long time. I'd say. It feels more solid than the island we were on yesterday. Much more. There's also moss. Heat moss. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Didn't expect to find vegetation in Antarctica. See if they can string my tennis racket. <laughs> Maybe sharpen my skis. Probably resaddle my horse. My horse also needs some horseshoes. I was thinking maybe I'd buy a nice fine quilt. Hopefully I can get some new fishing line. There it goes there. Just about went overboard. with all these penguins. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Look at them. 600 of them. Actually, 600 chicks. <laughs> Did 
This book contains recipes from the 1940s and 1950s and includes things like seal brains and thin slices of liver and well this one's interesting, Tin Hunter's Fat Bacon. Sounds all right. Yeah, I'm very excited to give it to my vegetarian friend. And do you know why the men on base made omelettes? Why? I prefer to make omelettes. Why? Because when they boil the penguin egg, it turns out that the white inside the egg, it doesn't turn white as we have in the chicken eggs. Oh. It stays translucent. So you get a translucent jelly ball with something yellow in it. Oh, nice. And of course it tastes a bit strange because of all the krill they are eating. Yeah. So then they decided to make omelettes because then everything is just mixed together and it doesn't matter. Everything is yellow. Yeah, as far as gear goes, you know, I... Uh, DSLR camera is going to be a way to go, uh, things you can change lenses on. I think a lot of people get too hung up in too much gear. Um, they bring way too much. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different choices when it comes to lenses. I like uh, to keep my, my thing simple. I'm not carrying I'm not carrying a huge backpack full of gear. I'm basically carrying two camera bodies with me at all times. Uh, one with a longer lens, uh, like a 100 to 400, or in this case I have a 150 to 600 to be able to get those long telephoto shots. And then I would either recommend just kind of a medium overall lens or a wide angle lens. I really like wide angle uh, shots. I love how the perspective is so different. Not a lot of people tend to shoot wildlife that way, but I think uh, having some wildlife in some of the landscapes, just small, is, is, can be really impacting. Yep, that's the show. Alright, so. Okay, go ahead. Yeah! Hey, man. Me and Spiller, me and Spiller are gonna do it together. Here we go. Ah! Oh, I can't even do it. I can't even do it. Just pull it. You're good. Jump, Michael. Jump. Do it. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It goes away really good. Oh, you're doing it! Yes. chocolate being served on deck five and we watched as the captain navigated us through a bunch of massive icebergs through the La Mer Pass which is a very tight passage and uh, sometimes apparently it's closed by icebergs and today it was open and uh, it was remarkable to see the navigation of the ship through that space and the captain came and told us that uh, the Titanic had the entire Atlantic and they managed to hit an iceberg and we've got hundreds and we didn't hit any so I think he was big ups in himself. Antarctic glacial water. Yes. There's no other way around it. That is the fountain of youth, and uh, it's what keeps me and my fellow colleagues looking so bright and shiny and youthful every morning. <laughs> You're actually 20, not yes. 37. Yes, okay. I'm actually 20. Wow. So yeah. how long have you been doing this for? Then? For two years now. So I started my first contract. I was 18 years old. Yep. Uh, 
still trying to grow a beard. That's uh, my current professional goal. Yeah. Is uh, you know, you don't have any polar authority and down in Antarctica beard. until you have a big, uh, you know, fulsome yeah. beard. We are going to an island off the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula and we will be seeing the largest Gen 2 population on the peninsula. 65,000 breeding pairs. You did Actually, research this morning. 6,500, sorry. You were prepared for this conversation. Cooper yes. Island. Oh, he was. He read, the, he read the sign. I did. So we're on the boat with my chum, Phil the Krill, and we're going to uh, see if we can't attract some whales with them. Absolutely. They already saw one at 2 o'clock as we've been sitting here. Can I get a car Bills become famous. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We may show the tail. Oh, nice. Uh, we got lucky five minutes out of the boat, so. So the whale just came up right behind our boat and basically swam between us and Jill's Zodiac for a few minutes. And I think we got some amazing underwater footage of the whale um, because it was literally right at the side of the boat. And we were a little afraid that it might tip us because uh, it was in fact underneath us. It, it, was, it was right here, it's right here. And it gave out this piece out, like kind of that. Bye, humans. I'm out of here. That was perfect. Phil, 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 the crew. Photography opportunities in Antarctica are nearly unlimited. The weather is always changing, the icebergs are always moving, they're breaking apart, and wildlife is everywhere. The sun sets around midnight, so it's difficult to get to sleep when there is so much happening around you all the time. The animals have no fear of humans here. If anything, they're actually curious and want to meet us. As amazing as everything seems here, the Antarctic Peninsula is starting to show signs of climate change. Antarctica is basically the one unexplored continent in the planet. And if every other continent contains all the minerals and commodities that we trade on a global basis, so does Antarctica. And if it's melting, then these commodities are going to become available. And that puts the peace treaty and, and all the other efforts to protect that uh, ecosystem at risk. Really what you feel in Antarctica is just the impact that humans have had everywhere else in the world because it is still so fresh. You know, I'm constantly thinking about, about that since I've come back and I've told as many people as I can about what that was like. And I actually hope that this, this film uh, plays a part in protecting Antarctica, um, again, as the planet continues to warm and uh, that ecosystem uh, comes under threat.
Well, I was just thinking about how awesome it is that those penguins won't, aren't running away from people because they aren't scared of being hunted. We get exposure and interactions with them that we couldn't get anywhere else, and that, that's pretty special. What does it feel like to hold Phil the Krill? It feels amazing. Do you feel like there will be many whales and many penguins surrounding you shortly? Probably. Okay, here. Matt, you can have Mr. Damon. You can have Phil back. Leaving land for the last time in Antarctica was really hard. It's a place that I never thought that I would have the opportunity to visit, and a place that I'm not likely to ever visit again. I'm happy we documented this trip. It's something we'll be able to look back on for the rest of our lives. When Donna has won the Nobel Prize for Literature, Michael Litt has accidentally become Prime Minister of Canada, and Mike McCauley has finally met Matt Damon. Turns out that the $10,000 Leica isn't as great as I had dreamed. It was the unattainability of it that made it seem much better than it was. It's funny how the visiting such an unattainable place like Antarctica actually exceeded all expectations. Well, an unattainable thing was a letdown. I guess this goes to show you that new places are always better than new things. Whether you believe that global warming is natural or the impact of human industrial revolution, the reality is that we have been on this planet for only 150,000 years, and yet the planet is four and a half billion years old. This isn't about saving the planet. This is about saving humankind's ability to survive on this planet. The rate of increase on the peninsula, the rate of temperature increase, yep. is the highest anywhere on this planet, on the Antarctic Peninsula, where we are right now. The Adelis are the most impacted ones because they are the true Antarctic penguin and they need pack ice. Just like the birds everywhere else live in trees, these birds live on the ice. So as the ice goes away, these birds don't have any place to live. So that changes their habitat. It also changes their food source because the krill, their main food source, lives underneath the ice. So krill need colder water, less than four degrees, and they also need the diatoms, which is a type of phytoplankton, yep. which bloom on the underside of sea ice. If we don't have that sea ice, we don't have the diatoms growing underneath and being the habitat for various stages of the krill. Yeah, we need to be sensitive that there's lots of animals here trying to make a living and we're not the only ones and we need to share this planet with them. And if we can live just a little lighter and just a little softer on our planet, then there'll be more uh, resources for all the animals. <laughs> 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 
so after watching many documentaries and learning more about climate change here in Antarctica, Michael and I have decided that we're not going to be eating beef. You could say if climate change is a complex argument, however, humans are clearly impacting it. And we've seen firsthand the impacts of climate change in the Antarctic Peninsula. With all that said, Donna and I are going to be consuming our last ever beef at this meal on this ship as we come home from the Antarctic South. Can I say something? I'm really sorry, Dad. I'm really sorry. The best beef? <laughs> I'm glad it's the best. Yeah. You want to talk about the last beef you're ever going to have? Well, we figured the beef had already gone party to the, the beef market and the beef process, so we're going to consume this beef and uh, this is going to be the last beef we ever consume for the rest of our lives. Should, should we flesh cheers? Yeah, you want to put, a, put it on a fork? Yeah. We're going to flesh cheers the beef. It's going to be gross for a lot of you vegetarians. Oh, no, I'm missing a little piece. Okay. It's on video, you got to go big. Okay. Can you get the sound of it slapping? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, my phone. It's really good. But I won't miss it. I'm thinking about the Adelie penguins and the krill. My boy Phil. This is for you, Phil. This is it. Soak up all that taste. So hazards. Remember it. Ready? Sit. Oh, 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 Don't waste it. Chew it. <laughs> Smell it. Feel it. Amazing. Sit. No more cow. I'm really happy about it. I was raised on the fact that beef was like the delicacy that we got to eat, right? The 90s were the craft dinner, the Michelinas the canned soup era of processed foods. And so when you got beef, even Salisbury steak, it was like the thing. And so if it's the thing you attest to in your later adult years when you have access to it almost indefinitely, like it's what you want. And that's probably really part of the problem with millennials. So I've been thinking about it for a while and uh, yeah, I think it's a good decision. I'm happy about it. Me too. Can we get a pet cow? Perfect day for the road The blue sky will take us home We'll take it easy, we'll take it slow It's a good day for the road I saw things that a lot of people will never get to see and I experienced places that a lot of people will never get to experience and hopefully these are memories that I get to keep for the rest of my life because I feel so fortunate to have had them and I definitely want to come back. It's so magical and a lot of people come here 
They can't explain why they need to be here. They just, they have to be here. The diamonds shine on the snow My guitars sleep on the back seat I'm following the river to another show It's a perfect day for the road I've learned from being here is that I'm not done yet as a human being. I'm not done learning about myself, trying new things, meeting new people. That's the biggest thing that I hope passengers get when they come here is that they're not done yet. There's so much that they can do in life. And there was people on this trip that communicated that they did not think that they had the capacity uh, to get on a Zodiac, uh, to be in the cold, uh, and to experience that type of ecosystem uh, in real life, and thought it was something that they could only experience from the comfort of the living room on their television. And I think one of the key takeaways is, is while video is the next best thing to being there in person, it does not actually replace uh, the benefit of being there in person. And so if you have the opportunity to see a place that you've always wanted to visit, do not accept video as a substitute pack your bags, plan your trip, and go out there and see it because there is nothing like being there in real life. When I had a chance to kind of look back on the experience we had in Antarctica, um, especially on, on the trip home, and, and it wasn't a short trip home, so it kind of allowed for, for some, some good reflection time, there were like three really important things that consistently came to mind, and, and the wildlife was absolutely one of them and probably the top one, and I think I was able to describe it in two words, fearless curiosity. And I found that because the animals didn't have any fear towards humans, they were able to be curious. And that resulted in them coming up to us, checking us out, seeing what was going on. And in any other part of the world, most wildlife is scared of humans because humans are a threat, humans are an enemy. And in Antarctica, the wildlife just hasn't been exposed to that. And so it just creates this really, really unique experience with wildlife. And I think that that's probably one of the only places on earth that you're able to do that. Oh, yes, uh, so two and a half months since Michael and I stopped eating beef, since I personally stopped eating beef, certainly don't miss it. The notion of cheersing flesh <laughs> gives me chills, especially when it's meat slapping around. The beef in Argentina is delicious. So if you're gonna give up beef after you visit Antarctica, make sure your last beef is Argentinian sweet massaged cattle. I don't miss beef. It's beautiful. Antarctica is beautiful. Go there simply because it's beautiful. <laughs> That's it. Hey, buds. Okay. This is the best party ever. What's up? <laughs> oh no, I think it's jumping in. Oh, they're so smelly. Oh, they do. Oh. What's up? Peppy, Peppy says hello. Just so you know. He sends his love some pictures. I got some krill. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>